Hello everyone and welcome to Edu Surge Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. Today's topic is enhanced recovery after surgery protocols also known as ERAS protocols. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai, your educator for the day. So enhanced recovery after surgery protocols have been in clinical practice since last decade or so. So we are going to see some videos on ERAS. It is a very important topic for exams as well as for enhancing patient recovery and reducing post-operative complications as well as length of stay. So what we are going to see in this first video on ERAS is the concept of ERAS, the importance of the contributions of uh, Henrik Kellett, the first ERAS guidelines and the ERAS society. We are going to see how ERAS has evolved and contains multimodal interventions which span across the pre-operative period, intraoperative period as well as the post-operative period and also the importance of audit for assessing outcomes and improving the existing ERAS protocols. So evolution of surgery and to reach ERAS, there have been some modifications that have been proposed by different people. The first concept for fast tracking came to be known as a daycare or ambulatory surgery. And the intent here was to increase the bed turnover, reduce the stay of the patient in the hospital so that the infective complications are reduced, post-operative complications are reduced and the surgery process is fast tracked. This gen changed to fast tracking where the attention was on post-operative interventions with no regard to pre-operative or intra-operative interventions. It is after this that Henrik Kellett proposed multimodal rehabilitation, which is now known as ERAS or Enhanced Recovery After Surgery, where attention was given to the entire perioperative process and not only the post-operative process as seen in fast tracking. <clears throat> so what is the principle behind ERAS? So the hypothesis proposed by Henry Kellett is summarized here. What he said is that surgery causes pain and there is a stress response to surgery. And it is this stress response to surgery which when exaggerated or when not managed well leads to features like prolonged ileus, fatigue, hypoxemia leading to sleep disturbances, prolonged immobilization as well as semi-starvation that was followed and even now is being followed in a lot of centers, prolonged placement of drains, tubes and restriction of mobility due to these tubes, all of this lead to delayed recovery. So what Kellek proposed is that if we take care of all these parameters throughout the patient journey in the hospital or after consult with the doctor, pre-operative parameters, intraoperative as well as post-operative, the patient's recovery can be enhanced, leading to less length of stay in the hospital and probably a reduction in post-operative complications and hence cost of care. So this was the hypothesis and the aims of ERAS. Now, Key outcomes, as I've already said, is shorter length of stay, so the patient is happy. There are reduced post-operative complications, the patient is mobilized early, and the cost of care go down, as well as there is a standardization of protocol across nations with help of ERAS. So now let us see what are the key components of ERAS. Like I said, it is spanning across the patient journey. So it starts with pre-operative care, goes across to intra-operative care and then post-operative care. Mind you, all the components don't need to be addressed though they can be utilized in each and every patient. But standardization does not mean that you have to use all the steps in all the patients. It just means that there is a protocol in place which you can modify based on individual situation and individual patient need, right? So it is not copy pasting the same and the all 15, 16 components that are there in all the patients. But these are the components that have been shown to have positive effect on reducing post-operative complications, length of stay and total cost of patient care. 
So let us see the pre-operative components. Most important pre-operative component is talking to the patient, counseling the patient, setting correct expectations from the patient, what is going to happen in the pre-operative phase, what is the surgery and what is the expected post-operative care. So it is very important to counsel the patient appropriately so as to reduce the anxiety of the patient as well as the family. And this has been shown to help reduce the post-operative stress response and enhance the recovery of the patient. So carbohydrate loading has been recommended by ERAS Society to reduce insulin resistance to avoid prolonged fasting. And this has been shown to reduce stress response to surgery. Different formulations are available in different nations. So I'm go not going into the names of different formulation. But the concept is to give the patient less fasting to liquids so the recommendation is six hours fasting to solid and two hours fasting to liquids and before these two hours start to give a carbohydrate load in the pre-operative period important point is pre antibiotic prophylaxis in the pre-operative period standard recommendation is followed that is an antibiotic dose within one hour of the skin incision thromboprophylaxis standard guidelines is to be followed these are components of ERAS because standardization helps in avoiding missing some of these points otherwise in preoperative management of the patient. Selective bowel prep. So the recommendation currently from the colon and rectum societies as well as the ERAS societies is to use bowel prep selectively. We use it in left colon and rectum surgeries. We don't use bowel prep in small bowel or right bowel surgeries. So selective bowel prep is recommended by the ERA society as well. This combined with carbohydrate loading it may be practice changing intervention for a lot of people who have been following the previous practice of bowel prep for all bowel surgeries and fasting more than six to eight hours for all patients. But Believe me, we have been using these interventions, carbohydrate loading, even before Whipple and colorectal surgeries, and no patients have had complications specific to carbohydrate loading. Going to the intraoperative period, some of the key components of ERAS are minimizing the incisions as far as possible, using minimally invasive surgery wherever it is feasible. Maintenance of normothermia in bed warmers, inline warmers, all these warmers are important to maintain the temperature of the patient and to reduce the post-operative stress response. Fluid management, goal-directed fluid therapy is recommended in ERAS and this has been shown to avoid overloading the patient with fluid as well as not keeping the patient dehydrated in the surgery. The right balance of fluid can be estimated based on the advanced monitors that measure the stroke volume or cardiac output. The simple CVP also works, but the guidelines recommend goal-directed fluid therapy and the goal can be stroke volume or cardiac output link. Very important in intraoperative phase is to give preventive measures to avoid post-operative nausea and vomiting. That is PONV prophylaxis. Post-operative nausea and vomiting prophylaxis recommends a short dose of dexamethasone at induction and using 583 antagonists such as ondansetron at induction as well as in the post-operative period. Analgesia has to be used as per the type of surgery. If it's an abdominal surgery, then you can use epidurals, you can use tap catheters, you can use wound infiltration, patient controlled analgesia as well as a combination of all these, which is known as multimodal analgesia techniques. So all these intraoperative measures, when used appropriately in appropriate patients, can help reduce or mitigate the stress response to surgery and help patient recover faster. In the postoperative phase, it is very important that the patient mobilizes early and the nasogastric tube and drains are removed early. We now don't follow the practice of keeping the nasogastric tube for five days, which was followed in the past, or keeping the drains for five to seven days or till the patient is in the hospital. Even after a Whipple procedure, usually the nasogastric tube is removed on the second day. 
and the patient is started on liquids at least by the second or maximum by the third day avoid opiates because opiates increase ileus and reduce the rate of patient recovery nsaids are also to be avoided because they can cause kidney injury so both these agents in analgesia are to be avoided transdermal patches patient control analgesia and paracetamol are routinely used agents in our practice very important in post operative period just like pre operative reduction in fasting similarly post operatively also reduce the duration of patient fasting start diet as early as possible like i said even for gastric surgeries we are starting orals on second or third day with changing times and evidence that is mounting up with the help of eras guidelines we know that the patients can be fed early and this is in fact beneficial to reduce the post operative complications and the length of stay so early diet helps start your patients on liquids by second or third day if not on the same day depending on the complexity of the surgery presence of gut anastomosis chances of leaks and the type of surgery that you are doing mind you eras was proposed for elective surgery and non metastatic cancer cases so the scope of eras rests in elective surgeries and non metastatic cancer surgeries we have been implementing eras in metastatic cancer surgeries but it is difficult to use a lot of these points in emergency surgeries so with time the trends are changing so let's see how these things are utilized in emergency surgeries as well not to miss is a very important component of eras which is audit this is important because as a guideline eras is constantly changing so is our world of surgery so you have to publish data and your outcomes and share new findings on your observations when you implemented various components of eras a lot of studies have been done with using four or five components of eras most commonly used are carbohydrate loading reduction in drains mis that is minimally invasive surgery and early resumption of diet and mobilization as a combination of parameters used these parameters have also shown improved patient recovery and shorter length of stay what these studies help is it helps us in reviewing our practice reassess what works the most and implement these changes in future patients so to summarize in this video we have seen the concept of eras we have seen what the hypothesis of henry kellett was we saw that the pre operative intra operative and the post operative parameters in combination can help reduce the post operative complications by reducing insulin resistance reduce patient fasting patients are happy because they are fed early audit helps us in improving analyzing our data and implementing best practices so this is what eras is all about it is not a set copy paste protocol it is an aim at standardizing the peri operative journey of the patient which is always open to modification based on new evidence in upcoming videos we will see eras in practice in liver surgery as we use it in our unit being a liver surgeon so we are going to see the eras guidelines in liver surgery next and there was a recent article in 2022 from the eras society so that should be fun so subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to the channel for next video also you can log in to our website where there are a lot of book recommendations lot of our previous videos and a lot of data on some of the publications of our team so that should be helpful thank you